What's up everybody, it's Brendan from Outbound Media here. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace the sky in Photoshop. So, let's get right into it. First thing I'm going to do is open up our image. I'm going to include a link to this image um, just below this video, so if you want to follow along with me, you can. Um, so this is our photo here. I got it off of Unsplash, which is a stock photo site essentially. So first thing we're going to do, we want to replace the sky in both the sky and the reflection. So we're going to duplicate our background layer by pressing Command or Control J. Now we're going to go over to our channels by clicking this, and we're just going to go through and we're going to click on each individual channel. And so what we're looking for is we want to find the channel that has the most contrast. So in this case, we want to, the blue has the most contrast. If you compare it to the red, green, and then blue, it obviously has the most contrast, as you can see. So we're going to use our blue channel to help us cut out our background. We're going to we're going to grab our blue channel and we're going to drag it down here and duplicate it. So now we'll have a blue copy. So next thing we're going to do is press Command L or Control L if you're on a PC and we're just going to play around with the levels. So what we want to do is we want to make the blacks as dark as they can be without losing quality around the edges. So what we're trying to achieve here is we want to get a completely white background and as black of foreground as we can because when we go to select it it's going to select out all of the white in our image. Everything that is black will stay. So this is about the best that I'm going to be able to get this. So we can just go ahead and click OK. Perfect. So now this is what our photo looks like. Um, now we're going to hover over the icon for blue copy and we're going to hold command and click it. So now you'll see all our marching ants around everywhere. And as you can see, it's selected out everything that is white. Um, so even though it has selected out all our buildings, that's no big deal. Um, well, we can fix that in a second. So now we'll go back to our layers, and with our new layer selected, our layer 1, um, we're going to make a layer mask, so just by clicking this layer mask icon down here. And now when we turn off our background layer, you'll see that we just have the sky. So we want the buildings, not the sky. So with our layer mask selected, we'll press Command or Control I. Now that just had inverted our mask and now everything, now is the opposite of what we just had. So unfortunately we're going to have to do this by hand, but it's not too much of an issue. So it's really easy actually. We're going to click, hold alt and click our layer mask and this will come up. So what we're basically looking at is your layer mask. Everything that is white is seen, everything that is black is invisible or 100% transparent. Basically, everything that we want visible, we want to make white. So all of this, we want to be completely white. And everything here and down here, we want to be completely black. So we'll get our brush tool by pressing B, or you can click the icon right here. And make sure you have white selected, your white color. And also make sure you have a hard brush. You don't want too much of a feather, because then when you're going around the edges, it might go over a bit. So basically, all you have to do is just paint over all of the areas that are not white until so you keep, just keep doing this until everything is completely white so I'm just gonna go ahead and do this and I won't bore you guys with it I'm just gonna skip ahead and I will meet you when I am done Awesome, so once you've filled in everything with white and also erased the power lines, um, you can press Alt again and click your layer mask and it will take you back to your image. Everything's filled back in now. Um, so obviously the next thing we have to do is cut out the uh, rest of the reflection that's left here. So since there is a pretty clear edge, we can probably get away with our wand tool. Make sure you have the quick selection tool selected and pretty much just Go and click along or drag along the, um, the where the reflection is. So we don't want to delete this, we want to add it to the layer mask. So what we're going to do, we're going to right click and we're going to go fill. And since black is 100% transparent, we want in this case on our layer mask, since it's inverted, um, we are going to select color and then make sure black 
is selected. And now I'll press OK. And it just fills that entire area with black. And now we'll want to deselect this. So we can right click and deselect. And now we have that area onto our layer mask. There is a little bit that it missed right here. Um, it, it, it's not quite matching up. So what you can do is with your brush tool, press B. And you want to get a your white color. So you can press uh, X or you can just switch it. Draw in where it missed, essentially. So I just adding in that little bit. And now I'm going to right click on my layer mask and click select and mask. With our fine edge tool selected, we are going to just click Smart Radius and we are just going to go over top of it like that. And voila, we have the rest of the building that we were missing. So now we have our town, I guess, and our reflection completely cut out. So now we can add in our sky. So I'm going to go ahead and open my cloud photo. I'm going to click Command O to open and I'm going to go find my clouds, so storm clouds one, perfect. So you can find this image in the description. Um, I'll leave a download link for you guys. Once you've imported it, you want to duplicate your layer just by pressing Command J. Then you can click V for your move tool. And we're going to just click and drag it up into our um, town. Perfect. So we can drop it. As you can see, it's a little bit small, but you can enlarge it just by clicking shift, holding shift and dragging out. Um, what you want to do is you want to move that layer down and underneath your town. So now it's behind this city. We're going to rename it to Sky Clouds. And now we're going to duplicate Sky Clouds and we're going to name this one Reflection Clouds. So the Reflection Clouds you want to make sure are on top of the Sky Clouds. Um, and now with your Reflection Cloud selected, press Command T and then right click and go flip vertical. Now we'll drag that down and we'll just put it right where the reflection would be. And we're just going to go down to perspective. Um, so what we're doing here is we just want to make it look like it's a part of the ground and not um, a 2D surface, I guess. So we're just going to click on one of the corners and we're going to drag outwards. So all that does is it pretty much just distorts it a little bit and now it looks like it's sitting on a puddle rather than a 2D photo in the background, I guess. So perfect, you can press enter when you're done, when you're happy with that. With my crop tool, I'm just gonna click this tool right here. Since we have so much more real estate with our new cloud photo, we can just drag the image up like this. Um, so I'm gonna go right about here. Perfect, and click the check mark when, you, when you're happy with that. Perfect. So this is, this looks a little bit better to me. Since I want this to look like a little bit more of a fine art photo, I'm going to put a radial blur on both the clouds to look like a crazy long exposure. So what we're going to do, we're going to click our sky clouds first, and we're going to go filter and convert for smart filters. I'm converting for smart filters just so then if I ever want to adjust anything later on, I can do so. So once we're adjusted for smart filters, you'll have this little icon that pops up on your layer. And we'll go filter, blur, and then radial blur. You want to set the blur center to somewhere in the middle of the town. So I'm going to put it right about here. And make sure your blur method is on zoom. And your amount is at about 50. So I'm going to click OK. See what that looks like. So that looks good for me. Um, so now we're going to go and do the exact same thing on our reflection clouds. So with our reflection cloud selected, we're going to go filter, convert for smart filters, and then back to filter, blur, radial blur, and then OK. So now we have the exact same blur of the exact same clouds on our sky and our reflection. When you take a photo, the reflection is typically a little bit darker since it's in the water and things like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click my exposure adjustment layer, and I'm going to clip it to my reflection clouds just by clicking this little box here. So once this arrow is here, it means that this exposure layer is only affecting our reflections. So we're just going to bring down the exposure just a little. And then now with our sky clouds, I'm going to do the opposite of that. So I'm going to get my exposure, make a clipping mask, and I'm going to make it a little bit brighter. So now pretty much you can experiment around. I'm going to add in a little bit of ND at the bottom of the image. Um, just to give a bit more of a 
fade. I'm going to also add a little bit of a white gradient to our horizon just to give it a bit of a, an extra glow and add a bit more depth. So I'm going to make sure I put that behind our building, so behind our layer 1. And we're going to make a new layer and then click your foreground to transparent. So whatever your foreground color is the color that you'll be, your gradient will be. And essentially I'm just going to make sure I have my, make sure I have my reflective gradient turned on. And I'm just going to make a little line like this. And I am going to move it until it fits in where I want it. So I, I want a little bit more of the gradient shown in the, in the sky than in the reflection, but I definitely want it to be seen in both. So that looks about good for me. Um, do any color adjustments or levels adjustments that you would see fit. This method can be used for just about any photo that you want to replace the sky in. Again, my name is Brendan from Outbound Media. If you want to see more of my work, check me out at outboundmedia.net or on Instagram at outboundmedia. Have a good one. Friend.